a groundbreaking high-speed passenger train built in Japan. The Itachi 800 is a new type of intercity train. Can a team move this pristine train more than 14,500 miles around the world? Ready. Yeah, man, we're ready. Without high winds blowing them off course? The wind speed is right up to 16, 17s. A World War II veteran with a globe-trotting past. To have a, a loco of this size is, is exciting for us. Can a team haul this vintage steam engine more than 80 miles through dangerous winding roads? Oh, I've got an ambulance here. The teams must battle traffic turmoil. You've got cars parked on your right. Wintry nights. It's a bit dark, isn't it? Living the dream, mate. And hold-ups. We need to be out of here by 3 o'clock today. To deliver these enormous engines on time. Beauty. A titanic task. Even for the world's toughest train truckers. Carving through the rural Shropshire countryside runs a prize railway line. A heritage line called the Telford Steam Railway that has been preserving iconic locomotives for over 40 years. This line is only one mile long, but boasts three historic station stops. This winter, a unique engine is due to visit the line to run special trips designed to draw crowds of more than 23,000 people. We run a Christmas event based on the Polar Express, and in the Polar Express, it's very much an American locomotive. The perfect train for this job is a 1940s former American military steam train designated the S-160. And Mr. Iron Horse himself proudly struts out of the roundhouse. 2,120 of these US Army steam locomotives were built between 1942 and 1946. They were deployed worldwide as part of the war effort to move military hardware and civilian goods. Officers at Camp Claiborne are experienced railroad men, recruited from the nation's major railroads. Actual railroad experience is also looked for among enlisted personnel, with many old-timers in the ranks. Of the original 800 that came over in the early 40s, the, the first part of the war, as they arrived, we commissioned them and, and we used them on various jobs uh, in this country just, just to fill a stopgap on the run-up to D-Day. This is the particular S-160 that will become Telford's Polar Express this winter. When built, it was destined for the Far East. This one went straight to China in 1945, where she was using the Chinese coal industry until the late 80s. From there, she was saved by a UK preservationist. One of their greatest strengths is their value for money. Being a war engine, they were built as, uh, to be cheap and economical to run, and that's one of the enticing factors for owning such a locomotive. All locomotives are expensive to operate, but these S160s are quite simple to maintain compared to some other locomotives that are on the market. This S160 can carry 8,000 kilograms of coal and feeds a massive 3.8 metre squared firebox that powers this impressive steam locomotive. From unsung war hero to its festive role as the Polar Express, this S160 is a true VIP. This really is the star of the show. This kind of just kicks it up to another level. This is the right loco, so the enthusiasts get excited about it. To have a, a loco of this size is, is, is quite exciting for us um, and, and the public uh, as well because of the story. The S160 is maintained by workers at the Churnet Valley Railway. The locomotive needs transporting 80 miles by road to reach the Telford Steam Railway for the winter season. At 12 metres, hauling this gargantua will be a monumental mission. And let's have your haulage. 67 miles south, 
family-run firm Allerlees are experts at devising ingenious schemes to transport heavy-duty locomotives, old and new. Originally moving cattle, and then this sort of progressed from there into general haulage and abnormal loads, and then specialising in moving abnormal loads to where we are today. Their hard-working crews and innovative machinery are capable of hauling trains across the globe. Anything that you wouldn't expect to be on the road, we can move it. That's what makes it so interesting working in this, because every day is different. OK, no, no problem at all. Thank you. Bye-bye. The US military steam locomotive weighs in at 73 tonnes. Transporting this powerhouse will be a challenging feat of engineering. The team need to ensure they choose the best route, the mightiest trucks and an expert crew to get this job done. The crew will need to transport the engine 80 miles from Churnet Valley Railway to the Steam Railway in Telford. But with minor roads to navigate at the beginning and end of the journey, this is a difficult move. It's the day of the big move. The crew has just 24 hours to deliver the American military steam engine to its destination. Heading up the trucking team is Colin Chisnell. Righty ho, we're on the move. He's worked for the company for 16 years and his longest haul has been from Scotland to Austria. Left there, left. Assisting him is Sam Hartman. First challenge? Load the engine front first onto Colin's trailer. There you are. Beauty. But there's a problem. The engine faces the wrong direction. The team can't turn the massive locomotive around, so they need to squeeze in the overlength trailer behind. There's not enough space, so they need to winch the engine forward to allow more room to reverse the unit and trailer into place. The tractor unit can then move out of the way. They need to get the trailer into a very tight spot. There's nothing to operate a handbrake on there. The 73-tonne engine has no working handbrake, so they need to winch it gently. If it picks up too much speed, it could derail. Shock it up. Next, Colin reverses the 27-meter unit and trailer into position. Have I got enough room to get the unit in or not? How are we looking? Drive the side about four. They lower and drop the trailer. When he turns, it's going to hit the thing. However, Colin seems to have got himself into a tight spot. You ain't got a lot more, mate. Whoa! Hey, up! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Go forward a touch more. In Churnet Valley. When he turns, he's gonna hit the thing. Colin is trying to get this 45-ton truck unit out of a tight spot. You ain't got a lot more, mate. Just a fraction. Go on. It's a tight squeeze. Yep. He's got it. But he's out. Finally they can load up the vintage American engine. First job. That's probably about right. They race to assemble the heavyweight steel ramp. Delays en route to site have put them behind schedule, so they are up against it today. Three hours lost. So that was a bit of a shame, but... No, it's early morning to get on, as uh, ends up getting smashed a bit, so... so. But, yeah, we're, we're here now. With a maximum speed of 30 miles per hour once they are on the road, the team must make up for this lost time as they load up. I'll just push him under a bit more, Cole. 
but they must take extra care of this delicate piece of railway history. Obviously it's old, so you've just got to treat it with some respect. Make sure it's safe in there. Ramp ready. It's time to load this 74-year-old Yankee onto the trailer. Weighing in at 73 tonnes, everyone's on hand to ensure this mighty engine loads safely. It's just a bigger version of Thomas, isn't it? <laughs> Go on. Leave it there. It was a good ramp, that was. Next task. Chain this beast of a machine down. Never want to waste an opportunity. Proud dad of six, Jason, always makes time for his kids. Got a two and three year old and uh, they love trains, so I have to keep getting the phone out now and getting them on FaceTime, showing them around the train. And <laughs> no doubt they'll have me on the Santa special at Kidderminster very, very soon, I should think. Last task before they hit the road, load the engine's tender. All the brakes are off. That's the steady. Just bring it up to the bottom of the ramp. Now just jack it. Keep it going, mate. Nice and steady. Right. All stop. As easy as that. Finally, reverse it out of the yard. No mean feet across the waterlogged woodland track. Yeah, we're just getting ready to go. The route out of here is not very good. <laughs> You've seen the lake. We call it the lake. It's not the best. The clock is ticking and pressure is on to beat the mud and get the Polar Express to Telford on time. We want to be out of here before it's dark, so which uh, and into Telford. It's horrible out right here. <laughs> You don't want to be stopping anyway. Japan, birthplace of the record-breaking 200 mile per hour Shinkansen train, also known as the bullet train. Japanese railway designers have been pushing the boundaries of high-speed train engineering since 1964. The Hitachi Rail Company is one of the country's leading pioneers of train design and manufacturing. The company was established in 1910, and over the past 14 years, engineers here have been producing passenger trains for railway networks across Europe. Today, workers at this plant are constructing an innovative new fleet of trains for use across the UK's main railway lines. It's called the Hitachi Class 800. This train runs on both diesel and electric power. Its top speed is 140 miles per hour and has special air suspension to give passengers the ultimate smooth ride. The Hitachi 800 IET is a new type of intercity train which will be working express trains from Paddington to uh, the West Country, South Wales, and also from King's Cross to Yorkshire, the North East, and Scotland. This new train will replace the much-loved high-speed Intercity 125 on many lines. The Intercity 125 has moved millions of passengers around the country since 1976 and was once the second fastest train in the world after the famous Japanese bullet train. The 800s will have more seats so they can uh, have more passengers on board and they offer greater acceleration. The first Class 800 trains began service in 2017 and are already cutting journey times. The new Class 800 trains are due to come into service across the network over the next two years. Body shells are shipped from Japan to this 31-acre, 82 million pound manufacturing plant in the UK, where each day, one new Class 800 is assembled. The Class 800, we've, we've brought in a lot of Japanese cutting edge technology on these trains, which makes them a lot faster when accelerating. These trains are slightly longer, which means that we have about 18% more capacity on the trains. 
Once up and running, the new fleet will cut travel times on the London to West Country route by up to 15 minutes, making them a star in their own right. We believe that uh, this will be an, a, an iconic train. More passenger legroom, more seats, better Wi-Fi, a whole better experience. Despite this site's goal to manufacture 237 Hitachi Class 800 cars this year, high demand means that additional trains need shipping in from the Japanese plant in Kudamatsu City to hit targets. Today, cargo ships from Kudamatsu City have transported another brand new Hitachi 800 14,500 miles by sea to Teesport. The precious carriages have arrived on the docks. Now the 26-metre carriages need hauling 94 miles by road to the Hitachi rail plant in Doncaster to be tested before they hit the main line. Alali's heavy hauling crews need to pull out all the stops for this multi-million pound mega move. Pull forward and just do the six on it, mate. Leading the three-team train trucking convoy is seasoned driver Kevin Norris. With six years' experience, Kevin is in his element. You get home on a Friday and you think, I've moved some of the most famous locos in the country. Moving a train every day. It's great. <laughs> Wingman Kieran is on hand to help with this epic move. It's a serious job, but it's relaxing at the same time. The crew need to transport the three 50-ton sections of the train in convoy from Teesport, 94 miles south to the workshop in Doncaster. Oh, we'll make it down to Doncaster tonight, yeah. It's a long, drawn-out process. It's 9am. The team need this operation to go without a hitch to reach their destination this evening. But the crew are restricted to travelling before and after the afternoon rush hour, so need to leave before three o'clock. First challenge, load the first 26-metre carriage onto the 28-metre trailer. To do this, two cranes must lift both ends of this colossal carriage two metres off the ground in unison. Then, the team will need to reverse the trailer into position so the cranes can lower the trains down. This will be risky. Winds greater than 12 metres per second could blow this carriage around like a kite and cause irreparable damage. Why are we doing a lift this All right, I'll stand this side, so I can watch on. blow like that, the two cranes, capable of lifting 90 tonnes each, begin the big lift. Here you go, man. They lower the multi-million pound carriage onto the trailer with great care. That'll do for me, man. Ready? Oh, I like But just as they gear up to lift the second carriage... Come in control. Yeah, it gives the wind speed. Yeah, the so wind speed at the minute of the 11 stroke 12, uh, but we have, we have a thrust. Above 12 in the past half an hour. Well, look at that now, it's blowing yeah. over the top of the crane. Gale force winds threaten to derail this multi million pound move. I don't think they'll be lifting that. On the wind-battered northeast coast in Teesport, storm force gusts are delaying Kevin's team from loading the second of three carriages of a multi-million pound high-speed train from Japan. Yeah, it gives the wind speed. Yeah, so wind speed at the minute of the 11 stroke 12, uh, but we have, we have a above 12 in the past half 
Kerala. The wind speed is varying from sort of like seven eights right up to 16, 17s. Ideally, we want to be at 12 maximum. Until we get a constant window where we, we know that we're safe, there's no, no way we can risk lifting it. You know, wind and cranes don't mix. Hitachi transport engineer Theo makes a difficult call. With the winds blowing above 12 meters a second, it's not safe for this crane to lift such a heavy load. When the cranes lift up, the train could act like a sail and hit the other train, which would obviously be worst case scenario because you're talking, you know, four million pounds a piece. We have to have people stood in between the two trains. If it, you know, did take the wind and swung towards them, that could obviously cause very uh, bad injuries or possibly even death. His lifting limit's 12 and a half. And that's a 17. On the and we're blowing 17, so we need to have a break. They've been told by their company their max is 12. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, the storm's coming in more now, isn't it? So. If it's 17, we can't do it. We've uh, just been winded off now. Uh, due to the wind speed, they won't lift with the cranes. For the next 30 minutes, it's up to the crane people, really. They're not happy. Their max at the moment is 12. Um, so unless we get a, a break at some point, um, we'll just have to sit and wait with it. The delays wreak havoc with the crew's delivery schedule. We can't run out in rush hour, which is between 4 and 7 o'clock. We need to be out of here by 3 o'clock today. Otherwise, oh it's another day. We're supposed to finish this Thursday lunchtime and then go to another job on Friday. So if this rolls into Friday, we miss out on another job. So as a driver, you lose out on money as well. 30 minutes later, the weather takes a turn for the worse. They've signed us off for the day now, so we're allowed to leave the premises. Um, we'll speak to them before the end of the night and they'll let us know in the morning, um, hopefully by 8 o'clock, whether what time to be on the docks. Some days you have a very short amount of time and the weather can work against you. So the cranes, they'll go home tonight and then come back again as soon as it's light, basically. So we've got the longest available time to load these trains. Uh, the drivers, they'll leave their trucks and their trailers here and they'll go and find a hotel and stay overnight until we're ready to go. With the cranes strapped down and the trucks parked up, the teams face a night in Teesport. They need some light relief after such a testing day. From which country does the gold for royal wedding rings come from? Australia, because it's a common one. Africa. And it doesn't take long for their spirits to lift. At Churnet Valley Railway, Colin's team is just starting their challenging 80-mile journey with the iconic American S160 steam engine and its tender. Well, I'm ready, Josh. OK, we're on the move. Eagle-eyed Jason heads up the convoy. <laughs> with the 18 and a half meter load following behind. I'm gonna shoot around the corner and fellas. Yeah, I'll give you a shout and it's all clear. Jason will ensure the route is clear and warn other road users of the hazards coming through. All right, you got one four by four with a horse box. Once that's gone, you've got the center of the road, guys. Beep. 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 Oh, you're an idiot in a transit that seems to be ignoring everything. The van driver may hope to squeeze through, but when facing off with a 120-ton behemoth, it's clear who'll get right of way. The two teams slowly snake their way through the built-up areas. 
Oh, we've got two tippers just turning in. Wait, uh, two minutes please, mate. Tap. You won't miss them. <laughs> just as they get on the straight and narrow, they hit more problems. Might have to let the light cycle, we'll see. I'll try and uh, nip round them now. I'll give you a shout when it's, uh, when it's all clear. I need you to make sure that nothing tries to come up that side because I've got to move over. It's a tense moment as they try to navigate this tight turn. Coming round now, Joyce. Yeah, all clear, fellas, all clear. We've got all the road. Yeah, all right, mate. Teamwork is key. Well, mate, you're okay, get back in, keep it going. Both lorries make it around the corner unscathed, but they're not out of the woods yet. I'll let you pass me at this roundabout. We've got a, a van just up on the curb a bit here. Oh, we've got an ambulance here. Jason needs to act fast to hold back the convoy. <laughs> Emergency services assisted. Okay. They crawl round the roundabout and head for the open roads. Lovely job. Though never able to take their eye off the road, they can relax just a little bit and enjoy the ride. Few quids worth a number plate about to come past here. A Rolex. I bet that number plate's worth as much as one of their top end watches. In Teesport, after an anxious overnight, Kevin's team is hoping the gale force winds have died down. Morning, mate. How are we looking for wind this morning? What are we reading? Uh, eight metres a second. Perfect. Lovely. Eight metres a second. As long as the wind speed carries on under the wind speed we need, we'll get loaded today and uh, hopefully get out of here. Before the big lift, they must inspect the carriages. Looking for damage. Any scratches or any uh, marks that are left on the coaches prior to we take them over, uh, because we become liable for any damage then. Any one seven. There's one scratch on the coach. Just covers us. There's any damage. Uh, who pays for it to be put right? After a 24-hour delay, it's finally lift off for the second carriage. Same again, mate. We'll just lower it down a couple of inches off it. The wind isn't as bad as we thought it was going to be. That's one down anyway. They race to load the third and final carriage, taking advantage of the better weather. Here you go, mate. All right, man. We'll lower it down then and uh, we'll come back a touch. After a nightmare battle with the elements... Cheers, Mike. ..the high-speed train is finally ready for the road. It's <laughs> normally an hour of load and we will load in 45 minutes each one, all chained up, waiting for paperwork, ready to go. Cheers, mate. Are we all right to go that, that, that gate? I'll let you know now, yeah. Cheers, mate. Kevin and the crew must now transport the three carriages of the train, 94 miles south, to Hitachi's workshop in Doncaster. I think we're nearly ready now, Gav. Yeah, man, we're ready. But we can only run at 40 miles an hour, so uh, in the traffic, it takes two hours, 45 minutes, three hours. See you, man. See you, bud. Thank you. An hour into the journey with perfect driving conditions, wop, 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 wop. Kieran has high hopes for an early arrival. We should be there, I think, at 12 o'clock. That'll be after that. You reckon? We're a lot earlier than we normally are. We're normally not loading until about 11. 
With the boys making such good time, they call ahead to make sure the workshop team is ready. We're going to arrive probably about half twelve-ish. If we let you know now, obviously, can we just come straight in and back into that back yeah. car park? Please, it's all done, mate. All right, mate, sound. Thanks very much. All right, mate, sound. Right, Cheers, pal. Thank you. Good up. Good up. It's all done. Clear, ready for us. They must be keen for them because they've had to wait for it, I know. Yeah. It takes two and a half hours to haul the train to its destination. But manoeuvring this giant into the rail workshop will be a challenge. To ensure the carriages are lined up with the workshop's tracks, the team must reverse each load down a narrow 1,200 meter road to the site. But cars parked on either side of the road, low hanging trees, and a tight turn will test their navigation skills to the limit. It's about three quarters of a mile. The sharp angle at this junction forces the team to block the road so they can reverse into the entrance. All right then, Bob's coming back. There you go, man. Once on the road, the team must squeeze through a bank of parked vehicles. Oh man, straight to that. There's a couple of cars on your near side, mate. You've got cars parked on your right, and there's one on the left for that 10 mile an hour sign. Just when they thought they were in the clear to unload their precious cargo, delays strike again. We booked in to unload and the representatives that work on the trains for us um, are obviously on another job today, so we've got to wait for them so we can unload them in the morning. So it's a matter of waiting for them. Kevin and the team face another night away from home as their 48-hour mission pushes into its third day. I think we're going to go have a look around Doncaster, go for a meal and then uh, early night ready to start as early as we can tomorrow to get unloaded so we can get home as early as we can. Four thirty pm After a two and a half hour journey, the convoy carrying the American military steam train arrives at Telford Steam Railway. But unloading this colossal locomotive in the dark will test them to the limit. We just made it here, but now obviously we're losing the light now, so uh, we've now got to try and get them offloaded in the dark. First task, reverse the 12 metre load into the cramped yard. We're just waiting for a machine to come. It's got to move a water tank over there to give us a bit more room. Once that's done, then we'll start lining up and uh, get the ramp built. It's always a long day. <laughs> Nothing ever goes as it's supposed to go. With the temperature dropping, this hardy team try to keep in good spirits. Well, you've got to move a bit quicker, keep warm, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit dark, isn't it? Horrible, isn't it? Living a dream, mate. Colin comes up with a bright idea. Whoa! Never expected that. With the water tank out of the way... Don't go too much tight with him. I'm backing off a little bit. They struggle to assemble their unloading ramp in the dark. Next task, winch the massive engine off the trailer. Go on, go on, go on. Whoa. But there's yet another problem. We haven't got enough room to get the tractor unit out and back round the back to winch it. So luckily, we're going to use Rob's winch. He's dropped his trailer off in the uh, side road. We've got this, this big scaffolding up here that was supposed to come down today, but hasn't. So we can't drive down there. And uh, they've got this gazebo thing here, so we're a, bit, we're a bit stuck. We've got about six foot, I think, gap. So. It's not going to go through. <laughs> they need to winch the engine off the trailer. 
but congestion in the yard makes it impossible to move the tractor unit round to the back of the ramp to connect to the engine. Fortunately, there's a second tractor unit on the right side of the engine. The team must pull this one into place to winch the engine off. Go on, go on. It's going to be tight for him. Yeah. Straighten up! But manoeuvring the tractor in this tight, dark space yeah. tests them to the limit. With the tractor unit in place, they start to unload the engine. Okay, guys. Guiding this whopping 73 ton steam engine onto the yard's railway lines in the dark. Sam. Requires meticulous teamwork. After a challenging afternoon, the locomotive is finally on the tracks. That's it, you're down now. Ready for its transformation into the Polar Express. It's been a long day, we got there in the end. It's just dark in it, so you've got to be extra careful and hard to see, but it's very tight in here. Seven thirty AM in Doncaster. Morning. Kevin and the team should be home enjoying a relaxing weekend. But delays have pushed them into a third day delivering the three high speed train carriages to Hitachi's workshop. Did you know it's Saturday? Yeah, all day. Does everyone here know it's Saturday? Yeah. They were in coming in for half seven apparently, so uh, they should be keen though. Thank you, Doki. <laughs> In a bid to make a quick getaway, the team race to assemble their ramp so they can offload the carriages onto the workshop's tracks. But there's still a lot of work to do. So the Japanese have to come out, check the trains, get them prepped to unload, and uh, hopefully by about 9 o'clock the first one will be off. The Hitachi Class 800 is fitted with a sophisticated air suspension system that ensures smooth travel for passengers when in service. To prepare for unloading, the team must remove special transportation brackets and fill the suspension with air to raise the carriage. If not done properly, the carriage will sit too low and scrape the floor. Probably about an hour and a half before we can unload. The team have found unique ways to pass the time while they wait for the Japanese to arrive. But this only goes so far. An hour and a half later, they're still waiting around. And it's taking its toll. They asked us on Friday to start early this morning, so we started at 7.30, uh, waiting for them, because the engineer he would come out at 8 o'clock. And obviously it's after 9 o'clock now. Yeah, it gets cold and you get wet. Oh, this is the main uh, engineer, so uh, obviously he looks like he'll come and check the train um, and hopefully let us to start and load. Oh, he's wandering off again. It may not be as quick as we want it. No, they don't like getting wet either, and they don't like the cold. Yeah, not good. After a two-hour wait, the engineering team finally arrives on site. Yeah, yes! With Kevin and the crew eager to get home, they help remove the brackets. You all right doing that side for us, Gav? As the engineers pump air into the suspension... Yeah, it's on, yeah. ..the carriages rise up, ready to unload. On the front corner wheel for you, mate. They must take extra care to make sure each multi-million pound carriage rolls onto the tracks without a scratch. That one I'll kick up to just watch it on there, mate. Yeah! Yeah, it's all done now. It's taken a little bit longer than we wanted to. A couple of delays with the customer's side, but uh, they're all off. Uh, it's all gone well. It's 
it's a good feeling actually when you realise you've just moved the future in sort of like the rail industry and it's just a normal day for you. You get that sense of achievement when you've done something like that. Yeah, I do enjoy it. The weekend can finally begin for Kevin and the team. Engineers at the workshop now put the train through a series of rigorous inspections to make sure it's safe to carry passengers. They run the train at both low and high speed. And Mr. James A. And test its brakes and systems. When you get to 15 mile an hour, we should fly the brake, and when it drops down to two mile an hour, they should come back on again. Okay. Checks done, this advanced high-speed train will finally carry passengers on the mainline network. Revolutionising travel around the country. At Telford Steam Railway, the Polar Express is ready for its first passengers. Without any further ado, please make your way to the station. Ready for the magic to begin. It's hugely, hugely popular. We, we've got uh, 23,000, or just shy of 23,000 people booked for the month of, of December. <laughs> this vintage American military steam engine has been given a special winter season makeover. Fans crowd the platform, eager to step on board. <laughs> Fired up, this historic locomotive is ready to put on the ride of a lifetime. We have 25 actors on the train, they sing and dance, they serve hot chocolate and cookies. They tell a story of which the locomotive is a star of. It's very much a theatrical event on the train, more than just a train ride. Santa's on the Polo Express, are you? Do you see Santa? No. You are. <laughs> We meet Santa, the main man himself, the star of the show, uh, apart from the locomotive. We sing carols, we have fun, and everybody has a, a really Christmassy time. Brilliant, wasn't it? It was fantastic. Yeah. Kids loved it, and all the adults loved it as well. Yeah, it was amazing. I thought it was really cool. Did we see Santa? It's phenomenally popular. Its reputation is going ahead of itself now, <laughs> and there's more people want to ride it than we can actually physically get into these carriages. <laughs> 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 <laughs>